Okay. Um, Go ahead. So thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm Jian Tang from Microsoft Research. I'm talking about uh, PDE, predictive test embeddings through large-scale heterogeneous test networks. So this is joint work with uh, Meng Chui from Peking University and Dr. Chao Zhu Mei from University of Michigan. So the motivation of this work is that learning a meaningful representation of tests is very critical in many machine learning tasks, such as uh, test classification, test clustering, and, uh, and the information retrieval. So traditionally, each word is represented independently to each other through the approach of one-hot encoding, and each document is represented as a backwards. However, both representations uh, ignore the semantic correlations between different words. So as a result, this brings in the problem of data sparseness. Okay. So to reduce the problem of data sparseness, uh, distributed representations of words and documents embed the words and documents into low dimension spaces. So in this space, in this space the words and documents uh, with similar meanings are embedded closely to each other. So this can actually effectively reduce the problem of data sparseness. And the test embedding has actually been, uh, has been proved to be effective in many machine learning, uh, on many machine learning tasks and has been attracting increasing attention in many communities, including machine learning, uh, data mining, and the natural language processing. Okay. So in literature, existing work on uh, text embedding can be generally classified into two categories, the unsupervised text embedding approaches and the supervised text approaches based on deep neural networks. And for the unsupervised test embedding approach, the typical, uh, the typical example is uh, the SCAPEGRAM model, which is uh, uh, the, the state-of-the-art unsupervised word embedding model. So the basic idea of SCAPEGRAM model is to use the embedding, sorry, to use the embedding of the target word to predict the embedding of each of its context words. So this is the basic idea of the SCAPEGRAM model. And for the uh, neural network-based approaches, the well-known model is a convolutional neural network. So basically, given a sentence, given a sentence, each word is represented as a, uh, with an embedding vector. So this embedding vector can be learned through the model or can be uh, pre-trained with existing word embeddings. And then a convolution layer is applied on the uh, sentence to obtain the embeddings of, of the phrases, and then followed by a max tooling layer to obtain the embeddings of the sentence, which can be further uh, uh, followed by a fully connected layer to, to further obtain the embeddings, to further transform the embeddings of sentence. So comparing the, the two types of approaches, the embeddings learned by the unsupervised test embedding approaches are much more general for different tasks because of the unsupervised learning process. However, when compared end-to-end -end, uh, with the certificated neural network-based approaches, the performance of unsupervised test embedding approaches usually falls short on specific tasks. So this may not be surprising because the neural networks are usually trained with a large number of labeled data for specific tasks, which are not leveraged by the unsupervised test embedding approaches. But despite this deficiency, the unsupervised test embedding approaches still have many considerable advantages over the neural network-based approaches. So first of all, that they are, oh sorry, I go back. Okay, so first of all, that uh, the unsupervised test in embedding approaches are usually very simple and scalable, while the neural network are usually very computationally expensive. And the second one is that the unsupervised test in embedding approaches can naturally leverage a large number of unlabeled data, which can be easily obtained, while the training of neural networks usually requires a large number of labeled data. And it's very hard for the neural networks to leverage the unlabeled data. And third one is that the, the model parameters of the unsupervised test embedding approaches are usually not sensitive to different data sets, but the training of neural networks usually requires uh, exhaustive tuning of model parameters. So therefore, in this paper, we propose to study predictive test embedding. So our goal is to adapt the advantages of the unsupervised test embedding approaches but meanwhile, we also want to incorporate the supervised information for specific tasks during the representation learning. So then the problem becomes, how can we uh, represent the unsupervised and the supervised information in a unified way? So here we use a task of test classification as an example. And we propose to 
encode both on supervised and supervised information through the heterogeneous test network. So, which includes uh, the word word network, and word document network, and the word label network. So, the word word network encodes the local context level word code currency. So, which are, are also leveraged by models like the skip, skip grant model. And, and the, the weight between each pair of words uh, is the number of times the two words co occur in all the local context windows. And the word document network uh, encodes the document level word co currency, which are leveraged by models like Topi models LDA. So, the, the weight between a word and document is the frequency of this word in the document. So, these two networks. Uh, encodes on supervised information, but we also want to encode the supervised information, so we use the word label network. And the, the weight between a word and a label is a, is a number of times the word co occur with the label. So we assume that uh, for each document, each word in the document co occur with the label of the document once. So we can see that um, the heterogeneous test network actually uh, encodes different levels of word co currency and the containing both on supervised and supervised information. And then by embedding the heterogeneous test network, we are able to obtain very robust and also optimize the word embeddings for specific tasks. Then how can we, how can we embed heterogeneous test network? So before introducing heterogeneous test network embedding, first I will introduce how, how to embed bypass networks. So actually we extend our previous work on large scale information network embedding our proposed, our proposed line model. So the essential idea of our line model is to preserve the first order and also second order proximity between the verdicts in the network. So the first order proximity is determined by the observed links uh, between the verdicts. If there's a link between, uh, between a pair of verdicts, then, then the first order proximity between the two works is very large. If there's no link between the verdicts, then their first order proximity is zero. So the second order proximity is determined uh, between a pair of uh, the second order proximity between a pair of verdicts is determined by the proximity of uh, by the proximity between their neighborhood structures. So basic intuition that if two verdicts they share many common neighbors, they are likely to be very similar to each other. So here we only consider the second order proximity because it's more effective on, on, on text domain. Because in free text, two words co occur with each other doesn't mean they are very uh, similar. If, the, if two words co occur with many common words, they are more likely to take similar meanings. So, so this, this is why we use the second order proximity here. And then given the bypass network and also uh, for, each, for each edge in the bypass network VIVJ, we define the probability of vertex VJ condition on the vertex VI uh, using the following um, using the following softmax function, and this uh, condition probability is actually depends on the embeddings of vertex vi and the vj. So here the u, uh, the vector u i is the embedding of vertex vi, and then for the over object function, we aim to minimize the negative uh, log likelihood of the observed edges. So this is the negative log likelihood of the observed edges. We aim to minimize this object function, and then we can obtain the embeddings of the vertex, okay? And then for the optimization, we use the techniques of edge sampling and also negative sampling. So the basic idea is that in each step, we random sample an edge uh, with, a with a probability proportion to its weight, and then treat the sampled edges as a binary edge. But meanwhile, we also want to uh, sample multiple negative edges um, for model updating. And for the details of the optimization, you can refer to our, our previous paper. So once we know how to embed bypass networks, it's actually very easy to embed the heterogeneous test networks because actually the heterogeneous test network is composed of the three by composed of three bypass networks: the word word network, the word document network, and the word label network. Note that here, the word word network, network is essentially a word context network, also a bypass network, because some words are treated as context. So, so then, the, then the straightforward way to uh, embed the heterogeneous test network is to take the submission of the, take the, submission of the objectives for each, for each bypass networks, okay? And then for the optimization, um, we, we use two different strategies. 
depending on when the labor when the labor data kicks in. So one is a joint training, so we can join train the three net network together. We use uh, we use both on supervised and supervised information together. So another way is inspired by the uh, by the deep learning uh, techniques. So in deep learning, what people usually do is that they pre-train in the model with the unsupervised information, and then they fine-tune in the model with the supervised information. So here we can do this, do the, do this, do the same thing. So we can uh, train the word embeddings with the unsupervised information, the word, word, and, and the word document networks, and then we can fine-tune the word embeddings with the label information, the word label network. Okay. And so once, uh, once we uh, embed the heterogeneous test networks, we can obtain very robust and also optimized word embeddings because the heterogeneous test network actually contains uh, different levels of word co currency and also encode both unsupervised and supervised information. And then given an arbitrary piece of test, how can we obtain uh, its embedding? So here we use a very simple approach. We just averaging, averaging the embeddings of its words. So this simple approach turns out to be very effective. Of course, in the future, you want to first embed First, improve the embeddings of the sentence or documents. You can use more advanced techniques like recursive neural networks and also convolutional neural networks. So in the experiments, we compare three types of text rep representation approaches. So the first one is a classical uh, vague word representation. The second one is on supervised text embedding approaches, which doesn't use the supervised information during the representation learning. So this including the, the, the state-of-the-art the state uh, word embedding model, skip grant model, so which use local context level word code currency, and also the paragraph vector model, which use a document level word code currency, and also our previous uh, network embedding model, uh, the line model, which can be applied to different networks, test networks. And the third, third type of uh, appro uh, approaches is uh, predictive test embedding approaches. So which uh, incorporate the supervised information during the representation, representation learning stage. And the, the state of the art uh, 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 text embedding approach is a convolutional neural network. And also we also, we also uh, use our pr uh, proposed um, uh, predictive test embedding approaches, PTE model. And for the evaluation, we use the task of test classification. So, so we first obtain the embeddings of the documents uh, in both the training and test uh, in, in both the training and the test data set, and then we use the logistic regression as a classifier. So we first evaluate the uh, the performance of different approaches on on long documents, including twenty news group, uh, Wikipedia articles, and the movie review, movie reviews in IMDb, and uh, and this as a result of unsupervised test embedding approaches. So first we can see that uh, by using local context level word code currency, so our line model with the word word network actually outperforms the skip grant model. So skip grant model is direct trend on the free text. And by using the document level word code currency, our line model with the word document network is able to outperform the paragraph vectors. And we can also see that on long documents, the online model, on, on the long documents, the document um, level word code currency is actually uh, more effective than the local context level word code currency. Oh, so these are results of the predictive, predictive test embedding approaches. So first we can see that uh, John, the training the three networks is more effective than pre-training the word embeddings with the unsupervised information, the word, word, word doc document networks, and then fine-tuning the word embeddings with the word label network. And we can also see that John training the three networks is also is more effective than the single word label network, showing that the unsupervised information, the word word uh, word document network, is very helpful. Uh, we can also see that uh, our proposed approach also outperforms the the convolutional neural networks, no matter whether the word embeddings are pre-trained or not. We also e evaluate the prof uh, we also evaluate. Um, the performance of different different approaches on short documents. So this includes the titles of DBLP papers and the short movie reviews and and tweets. And the similar results uh, we can observe similar results. So by using local context level word code currency, 
online model with the world world network also outperforms the, the script script model. By using the document level world co currency, our line model with the world document network is able to outperform paragraph vectors. However, different from the results on long documents, on short documents, the 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 local context level world co currency are actually more effective than the world than the document level world co currency. So this is because on on short documents, the document level world co currency are very sparse. So these results are also observed uh, in topic models because topic models also doesn't work well on short documents. Right? And these are the results of predictive test embedding approaches. So we can see also see that combining the three networks, uh, joint training the three networks is more effective than pre-training pre the word embeddings with unsupervised information and then fine tuning the word embeddings with supervised information. And the combining the three networks is more effective than the, the single word label network, showing that the unsupervised information is very helpful. However, different from the results on long documents, on short documents, our proposed approach uh, PDE actually doesn't consistently outperform convolutional neural networks. The reason is that on, on short documents, the problem of word ambiguity is more serious. And the convolutional neural networks can effectively handle this by considering the orders of the words, which is exactly the future direction of, our, of, of, of this work. So finally, we also evaluate the performance of different approaches uh, in a semi-supervised semi setting. We compare with the classical semi-supervised approaches, including label propagation, naive Bayes combined with EM or Wizen. So in these two figures, the x-axis is the, uh, the percentage of label data, and the y-axis is the uh, uh, micro F1. Also, also, you can uh, treat it as accurate. So we can see that our proposed uh, approach PDE consistent all the performance convolutional neural networks and also the classical semi supervised approaches. So one interesting uh, in the figures is that we can see that for this uh, green curve, the, the performance of the unsupervised test embedding approaches skip grand model. So increasing the, the number of labeled data during the classification st stage actually doesn't significantly uh, improve the performance. So this shows that incorpor incorporating the supervised information during the representation learning stage is very critical. So which is exactly what our uh, PDE model is doing. Right? So to summarize, so in this paper, we propose to study predictive test embedding. So we want to adapt the advantages of the unsupervised test embedding approaches, but we also want to naturally incorporating the, incorporating the label data for specific tasks during the representation learning. So we, we propose to encode both the unsupervised and supervised information through large-scale heterogeneous test networks, including the world world, world document and the world label networks. And our proposed approach uh, uh, is, is comparable to the certificated neural network-based approaches, such as the convolution neural network. And our proposed approach uh, outperforms convolution neural network on long documents and is comparable to convolution neural network on short documents. And that's the end of my talk. Thanks for your attention. OK, so thanks for uh, your nice presentation. So I have one question on the clarification. OK. Your long and short documents. Uh -huh. uh, how short is it, the short document? OK, so let's take a look at the data set. So like DPLP, the titles of DPLP are on average like 10 words. So I can't remember the length of the movie reviews, but for twists, it's like uh, on average 14 words. Mm -hmm. But for the long documents, we will use uh, uh, 20 news group data sets. It's like, uh, I think it's uh, both the 20 news uh, group and the wiki PD articles, like uh, 600 words on average. We don't do any uh, pre-processing. We didn't actually remove the stop words. Actually, performs very good. OK, yeah. thank you. So uh, let's get uh, the far remote one. Thank you. Thank you. So the convolutional neural networks which you trusted with, can you give me some examples of the kind of uh, you know configurations used because the okay. value is different, heavily based on that. Okay, I see. So you mean the configura configuration of convolutional neural networks, right? Yeah. So for convolutional neural network, actually, we're just using one one layer. Um, yeah. 
we just uh, using uh, th so the words are represented with the word embeddings, mm -hmm. and then we use uh, one one layer of conversion layer and the max pooling layer, and then followed by fully connecting layer. We didn't use uh, too too many layers because actually um, on text on text domain actually uh, too many too too many layers actually doesn't help much. So we're just using one. Uh, one convolution layer and one max pooling layer, and then followed by a fully connect layer. Yeah. The reason is because I have used up to three layers successfully to improve. Okay. And in fact, uh, Ilya Sutsakev, if you see his talk, he talks about how mm -hmm. you have to try as many variations as possible before you know when you should stop. Okay. That, yeah. That's why I was curious. Yes, because actually th there's a previous paper on EMLP we followed their um, configuration. They used in one layer of um, one layer of um, Convolution, uh, convolution layer and also max pooling layer. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so the second one is just nearby. Is this uh, is this the one we have? Hi, I, I was just curious about the uh, bag of words uh, performance on the classification. It okay, seems to I can show you. It's actually the photo on supervised has embedding. Let me see. Take a look at this. Uh, right. So because the bag of words, the dimension is actually very high. So it's actually it's not that bad. It's so good so best on supervised has embedding. <laughs> what could you say again? I mean I mean it's not that bad if you just. It's the best one, yeah. But if if just but but the dimension is actually very high. Yeah, but but if you can but it actually is inferior to the let's see. It's not as good as this one. So this is the the best uh, best result. So you, you cannot just compare with the unsupervised embedding. <laughs> you should compare with the supervised uh, embedding pushes, right? So, yeah, so this one is better than the backwards, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think so. Uh, I have the same question. Same question? Okay, sure. Okay, one question. Same question? Oh, okay, thanks. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, so speaker again. 